and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nasheen Bukhari, here to start off our week with some entertainment news. In today's episode, we will discuss Dua Lipa becoming the most listened artist in the world, followed by a review and a tribute to Chris Evans. First things first, let me take you to the top stories of the day. Dua Lipa becomes the most listened to artist in the world. Vin Diesel shares why Fast and Furious Saga is coming to an end. Chris Hemsworth to appear in Hulk Hogan biopic. Johnny Depp fans rail against Amber Heard after Aquaman 2 title reveals. And Jennifer Lopez and Rita Ora planning music collaboration. And now moving to the top story of the day. Dua Lipa has become the first in UK and second most listened to artist in the world on Spotify. The singer on Saturday celebrated her achievement on social media and also informed her millions of fans that she is the most listened to female artist in the world. To have further discussion on the subject, we have entertainment journalist Joel Kalkoff with us. Joel, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, thanks for having me. So Joel, with songs that were played more than anyone else's on UK radio and television last year, it looks like UK has found their another favorite queen of music, Dua Lipa. Oh yeah, she is definitely their current queen of pop. Mm -hmm. um, she is all the rage at the moment in the UK, but uh, not just in the UK. I mean, mm -hmm. she's gone really global. I mean, she's won Grammys for Future Nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Of course, she just won a couple of Brit Awards. <coughs> she she mm -hmm. is big in the UK. There is no doubt about that. Right. Um, they love her there. She loves the fans there. She's got a great fan base. Mm -hmm. I think all being well, this is a relationship that could go on for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Right. A very interesting fact was stated that the album Future Nostalgia proved to be the soundtrack to many people who were quarantining with its uplifting disco anthems providing the perfect antidote to isolation as it was released just four days before the first lockdown in UK. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and we've seen other artists who've chosen to delay their album releases. Mm -hmm. um, I know Lady Gaga has, um, I know Sam Smith has. There's been some big names that have decided that they wanted to wait till the timing was right, till they could tour the world with the new music. Mm -hmm. um, but Dua, and to her credit, she mm -hmm. completely went against that. She said, no, this is a bright disco pop sound mm. this is maybe what the people want to hear this is important this is my music this is what i've written i want people to hear it and mm. i think this i mean the evidence is there this was a fantastic decision on her part mm. these songs became lockdown anthems for the people of united kingdom mm. and all over the world they were vibrant they were fun it was bringing mm. disco back uh, this was a fantastic call on her part. It shot up the charts during lockdown. As you can see, she's become the most played artist uh, in yeah. the streaming world and on TV and on radio, as you mentioned. This was a fantastic choice from her. Mm. It's the soundtrack to the people's quarantine, the uplifting disco. Uh, what better way to isolate? And despite the fact that she was being reluctant, uh, she said that it's not the right time because people are suffering and releasing such, you know, disco music might not, might, might not be the right choice, but Till she experimented with it. <clears throat> yeah, and I, and I think we can see here really the power that music has on people. Mm -hmm. um, when an artist creates their music, their record, the singles, whatever it may be, they own that until they mm -hmm. give, bring it out onto the world. She's released this album. It's now for the people. Yeah. The people embraced this music. They just absolutely loved it. They got on board with what mm -hmm. she was doing. They understood where she was coming from with her album. Uh, you know, the future nostalgia, even in the name, we know that she was going back to what she liked as a kid um, and the disco obviously was a big part of that. And yeah, I just have to say, I, I think we took ownership of her music now. We're the ones that are enjoying it and credit to her for, I guess, going against her gut or with her gut in, eventually, uh, that this was the right time to release mm -hmm. her, her sound. 
Right. And Joel, a little, little bit of comparison comes in when we see that other female artists, especially Taylor, has been the most active one producing new songs and albums every now and then, followed by bagging some awards as well. But Dua Lipa is seen actively working on creating new music now. So keeping Dua's success and popularity in mind, do you think that now Taylor Swift has a huge competition? Uh, you know, they're probably all friends. There's mm -hmm. competition, but I think it's healthy competition. It's the kind of competition that you want to see in artists that drive them to be better, to find that next innovative sound, to find that next record that will bump them up the charts. This is competition in the best of ways. This is how we really see the best of these artists. Um, and their competition is our gain as an audience. And if it comes to a head-to-head -head battle between Taylor Swift and Dua Lipa, then we're the winners. We're the ones that get great music from both of them. So I, I look forward to it. Right. Joel, in many critics' uh, opinion, the Brits failed to show how li live music will work in 2021. However, Dua Lipa's performance is accredited as a showstopper during the Brits' event. I would like to know your comments on Dua's performance in Brits' wards. Um, I think it was a good performance. Um, I think it's difficult, and we know that. These artists are trying to reinvent something that's been the same for so many generations. Um, it's a difficult time. Yeah, it's interesting to see how different artists will approach this. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think she's doing what she can to bring live music back. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we have a look at the streaming and it's fantastic that she's the number one streamed artist. True. But we don't know the worth of a stream. We don't know how much these streams are actually bringing in revenue-wise. Mm -hmm. The way these artists make money now is mm -hmm. from their tours. They don't make anything from these streams. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to find a way. And credit to her for trying new things. Credit to her for being out there, for trying mm -hmm. to uh, perform live. And I, I think maybe it has been a failure thus far. But I think we're going to see more and more people trying different things, trying to get out there again and tour and, and seeing what will work. Right. Uh, also, uh, it is said that it's not only the music, but uh, the considerate nature of Dua is something that has made her a very popular star. It is so considerate of her uh, to demand in her speech in Brit's Award to, a, a pay rise for NHS workers as she won two major awards at the Brits. Yeah, and this just goes back to what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm supposedly speaking it, it doesn't look at it on face value but these musicians are not making a lot of money off the streaming services mm -hmm. they're the writers the performers they deserve something for their work these are artists and let's be honest these are struggling artists in a difficult time mm. a fair pay for what they do and for what they bring into our lives is absolutely necessary it's required I don't know enough to say what that form that comes in but it'll mm. be interesting to see and absolutely they uh, deserve what they can get Right. Uh, in a very recent interview, Megan Thee Stallion has shared that she is willing to collaborate with Dua Lipa by, share, by saying that Dua is fire and she would love to collaborate with her and, you know, love to create songs with her. In your opinion, what makes Dua's music stand out that other superstars from the music world now wish to collaborate with her? A great question. Um, I think she's able to hone in on what the people want to hear. Mm -hmm. Uh, no one could have foreseen this lockdown when she was creating this album. But what she was able to do by going back to what she enjoyed as a child, it's connected with a whole generation of music lovers and people listening to her stuff. What it is exactly, it, it's, it's this bright pop disco that mm -hmm. we keep talking about. This is what people, these uplifting anthems, this is what getting people up, this is what people want to hear. And as a live performer, she's really exciting. She yeah. is a great dancer. She really brings her sound to the stage. Pure she's an exciting collaboration. And we know that she's done these remixes uh, in her other albums and ones in French, ones with club discos and remixes. People want to collaborate with her music. It's uh, clearly a just, she's found mm -hmm. the rhythm and the way that people are connecting. Uh, and that has to be cherished and people want to be a part of that. Right, and Joel, looking at Dua Lipa's well-crafted videos, some critics have an opinion that her videos are playing a very important role in keeping her on top charts for the longest. However, 5 billion streams for Dua Lipa's music tells another story. 5 billion streams on Spotify. What is your take on that? Um, 
It's funny, Dua Lipa is almost like the MTV artist of the 90s without the MTV. Uh, she's creating interesting videos and these sounds uh, are, are very conducive to that kind of style. But the reality is people aren't watching music videos as much as they used to be. Gone are the days where we used to sit in front of the television at nine o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night and see the latest videos from the latest artists and you know what Michael Jackson was doing and what all these fantastic artists have been able to do on screen. Those days are gone. People are trying their hardest to be creative when it comes to the videos. But at the end of the day, as we can mm. see, people are listening on the streams. People aren't watching the videos and we're not associating mm. artists with their videos like we used to. Uh, streaming is where the game is at. And that's why we have to start putting a value on what we listen to. Right. And with too many choices in music these days, new releases from top singers every now and then, do you think that Dua has exceptionally done so well by remaining on the top charts for straight 17 weeks now? It's incredibly impressive. She's done really, really well. Mm -hmm. There's no second way around it. Um, we know Ed Sheeran, I think, came second. Yeah. He's been up there really. I think it was two, 2017 he topped and he's been there since. Yes. Um, so it's these artists that have managed to maintain consistency. Mm -hmm. They've managed to continually bring out fantastic songs. But mm -hmm. more importantly, what we're seeing is that it's people who are able to, to create everlasting songs and timeless anthems that people are listening to on repeat. And I think what Dua has been able to achieve here is that she's brought out singles and songs that people are going to be listening to in 10, 15, 20 years time, and mm -hmm. it's still going to be an anthem. Um, and that's what people want. Right. Uh, Dua has planned her 2021 Future Nostalgia album tour. Just recently, Sir Elton John tried to draw the authorities' attention by mentioning the issues faced by the touring British artists and gaining visas for other European countries. He called it a catastrophe for UK. Your thoughts on that? I mean, will that affect the touring artists of, of Britain? Sure. I mean, Elton John is music royalty. Mm -hmm. Everyone respects what he says. Everyone's going to listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. If he has something to say about this issue, then people are going to lift their heads up. They're going to open their ears and they're going to speak to him. They're going to find a way around this. I think this is absolutely going to be an issue. As mentioned before, this is where these artists are currently uh, bringing in their revenue streams. Hmm. So this is important. This is something that they have to absolutely get right if the future of music can survive. Right. Joel, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much. Thank you. That was Joel Kelkoff with his thoughts on Dua Lipa remaining on the top charts of UK for straight 17 weeks. And now, moving to the story details. Fast and Furious star Vin Diesel has explained why the extremely popular movie series is coming to an end. The actor who has played the character of Dominic Toretto since the franchise's first installment in 2001 revealed in a recent interview that Universal Pictures plans to conclude the saga with two more movies after the upcoming F9. Vin Diesel expressed that every story deserves its own ending. He also added that he knows people are going to feel like it does not have to end, but he thinks all good things should. There are reasons for a finale and Vin Diesel thinks this franchise has deserved it. Vin Diesel also said that the final two films could potentially release in 2023 and 2024, respectively. Chris Hemsworth is set to step in the shoes of wrestling champion Hulk Hogan in the wrestler's as yet untitled biopic. The actor is known for pushing his physique to a peak limit with every new film, and this one is going to be no exception. Known for essaying the iconic character Thor in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Chris has been extremely fit in the last few years. Talking about his prep for the upcoming biopic, Chris has been pumping to maintain a physique similar to that of former six-time WWE champion. After director of the sequel James Wan announced the title of the film's second installment, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, fans called out the creators to boycott Amber Heard following the domestic abuse case she and her ex-husband Johnny Depp were embroiled in. Soon after the announcement, the hashtags Boycott Aquaman 2 
and justice for Johnny Depp became trending topics on Twitter as fans reiterated that they do not wish to see Amber Heard's involvement in the film. One user wrote that Warner Brothers fired Johnny Depp because of an ongoing case, yet Amber Heard is still in Aquaman 2. Jennifer Lopez and Rita Ora are planning to collaborate on new music. The 51-year-old star and 30-year-old singer recently met in Los Angeles and insiders have revealed that they discussed working on music and possibly even a movie together. They have long waited to get together and finally their schedules aligned after Rita had finished filming The Voice in Australia. JLo and Rita met at Soho House in LA and spent a couple of hours talking about what they could possibly do together. Nothing was off limits and they talked about both music and films. We hope to see a masterpiece created by these two extremely talented ladies. And that is it from Newsroom. We will be right back after a quick short break. Stay tuned to find out more. Welcome back. Since it was Chris Evans' birthday on June 13th, today we decided to pay tribute to the cap. Born as Christopher Robert Evans, and he's best known for his role as Captain America in the Marvel Cinematic Universe series of films. Evans began his career with roles in television series in 2000, followed by appearances in several teen films, including 2001's Not Another Teen Movie. For discussion, we have SBS producer David Charlie Page. David, welcome to the show. Great to be back, Nishin. So, how would you define Chris? as an actor? Funnily enough, I think the best way to define him is as his role of, as Captain America. You know, he's kind of that um, all-American good guy. He's He's got the charm, he's got the looks, he's got the attitude that goes with it, but he also just seems like he fits in with the crowd, you know? He's, he's uh, you know, not overly, uh, you know, stunning he's he's just he's a regular guy and i think that's the best way to describe his roles yeah. and particularly uh the roles that he's best known for you know he's he's that kind of character that just he doesn't stand out necessarily but you absolutely get him you absolutely relate with him hmm. right and chris has appeared in a number of movies from comedy to action to drama and his versatility has become very symbolic Exactly. Outside of that Marvel universe, you know, he's delved into those more comedic roles, as you said. Not an, not another team movie was his real breakthrough role, um, but then he's been in in a whole range of films from you know uh, Scott Pilgrim, where he got to test yeah. his comedic side, to to Gifted, where we kind of saw a bit more of an emotional angle mm. to him. So he's he really has run the gamut as an actor. Right. And despite the fact that Chris Evans happens to be among the highest paid actors in Hollywood, he seems to be very picky when it comes to the movies he has been working lately. I mean, we do not see an influx of movies coming from Chris Evans every now and then. Uh, that, that is very much, you know, unlike being a Hollywood actor. Look, it's true he is very well paid as a, as a Hollywood actor. but. I would also say that uh, he probably deserves that money with the amount of films that he has been in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, it's insane. I think it's uh, 12 films all up that yeah. he's actually been a part of. Uh, no, 11 films for, as Captain America. Yes. So I think it's, it's fair enough to say uh, he deserves a bit of a break from some of the acting roles that he's, he's been doing on the mm -hmm. side. But um, it does certainly seem like he's getting back into those now that that particular role is kind of coming to an end. Right. Uh, Chris Hemsworth, Sebastian Hans, Carla Johansson and other fellow actors also speak very highly of his work ethics and the way he deals with public and his fans, which is a rare case to be seen in Hollywood. Certainly. And you know what was really fantastic to see over the weekend uh, while we were celebrating Chris Evans' birthday? Chris mm. Hemsworth actually, yeah. you know, had a bit of fun with him, uh, said, uh, hello, it's your 40th birthday, and <laughs> sent him a photo with yeah. another Chris, Chris Pine. So it yeah. was kind of a, a Chris celebration for the birthday, <laughs> which was a really True. great and funny thing to see. 
true. And his behavior towards senior actors is something that also makes him stand out, especially we, we all saw how, uh, you know, he uh, accompanied Betty White to the stage when she was announced for, a, for an award. Uh, we usually do not see such sort of happenings during the awards or coming from, from other Hollywood actors. So, yeah, he, he seems to be very well-mannered actor. Absolutely. And, you know, it goes back to that feeling of him being, a, you know, an all-round good guy, that, that mm. Captain America to the very end. I mean, mm -hmm. who wouldn't want to help Betty White up on the stage? She is uh, a legend unto her own right. But it certainly seems like he's somebody that just gets along with everybody, uh, mm. old and young. You know, he's, he, he, again, works with this giant range mm. of, of actors and of different skill levels and of different uh, stardom levels as well. So yeah. I think it's really fantastic to see him kind of putting all that aside and just doing the right thing and, and, and treating everyone as, as their own, uh, you know, their own individual person, which is fantastic. True. And now there is a new venture that Chris Evan has started with the name A Starting Point in which he's trying to connect Generation Z with the local politicians in order to bridge the gap which has officially earned him the title of Captain America which is of course very considerate of, of an actor you know who could have uh, you know given more attention to uh, his, his acting skills or his you know work that he's been earning from Hollywood but instead of doing that, he is now, you know, foc focused on uh, treating Generation Z with more political um, awareness. Look, he's definitely not the first actor to really delve into that entrepreneurial or charity uh, side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've got to really think about the fact that uh, these guys are very well paid. Um, mm -hmm. They're really looked after for what they do. And it's really great mm -hmm. to see them give a little bit of their time to give mm -hmm. back to the community. And I think especially now in the US, uh, we're seeing that push, especially for the arts community to be getting people involved in politics because that's really the way that change is going to move forward so mm. it's great to see him pushing this particular project forward right charlie of all the evans movies which ones are your favorite and why oh i think there's probably two which are up there and they're probably uh very very uh, conflicting films i mm. definitely love his role in scott pilgrim uh, I think it's probably one of the most hilarious uh, roles in that particular film. Mm -hmm. He's he's playing this, you know, completely out there uh, psychopath who's mm -hmm. gone off to murder Scott Pilgrim yeah. as one of the seven. And, and, and just some of the lines he has are those quintessential ones from throughout, uh, you know, the entire film. The other one, which I think is absolutely fantastic and on the complete flip side is the absolutely uh, unpassable Snowpiercer. You know, that film uh, really uh, redefined what filmmaking could be at that time and, and really changed everything. And to see him in such a quintessential role in such a really, really different kind of hero role was fantastic mm. as well. Right, and uh, let's talk about uh, his roles in other movies like Gift, Puncture, Snowpiercer, um, which also uh, made him gain a lot of fame in Hollywood because before that he was just you know being signed up for comedy movies and he was stamped as a comedy actor especially when he was you know uh, co-starring with Scarlett Johansson but watching the movie Gifted, Puncture and then Snowpiercer uh, how your thoughts changed about Evans acting skills? I think what they really show is how diverse he really is um, you know, we see him in these big budget films like Marvel, but but even before that, when he was in Fantastic Four, the uh, I I don't know which iteration of it it was, but mm -hmm. it it was one of the yeah. uh, the two thousands version where uh, you know he he was really the highlight of a really bad pair of movies. True. Um, <laughs> even then, you kind of could see his acting abilities, and yeah. it's his his absolute versatility in those other movies um the ones that you mentioned that really really show uh how diverse an actor he is it, it, it shows that both he's willing to be involved in these independent films and really get behind uh, smaller budget films to to get them to bigger audiences with his name but also really to to show the range of his skills between you know 
he's great at drama he's he's got the emotion um he's got a comedic bone which is fantastic um you know and and he's willing to to kind of show mm -hmm. everything and put everything out there and and really work hard to to get audiences uh involved in that film yeah and it is also said that in the avengers franchise exclusively evans was not given much screen time on purpose because otherwise he had the ability to steal the show <laughs> and i guess that's a, not a bad problem to have for the marvel mm -hmm. cinematic universe but um yeah i i can totally believe that you know i think that the captain marvel films are the best films that have actually come out of the um marvel cinematic universe to date uh they definitely show his charisma they show his talent off um but it's it's also kind of great that you know we we're seeing that all come to an end now we've we've seen it all um come to pass and it'll be really fantastic to also see him in more diverse roles as things go forward and he's he does have some really exciting projects coming up too which is which is fantastic right right joel uh it was fantastic having this uh, discussion with you and of course we wish him a very happy birthday thank you very much indeed thank you nushin and yeah happy birthday for sevens that was Charlie paying the birthday tribute to Captain America, Chris Evans. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time with some more entertainment news. Until then, take care and goodbye.